Good morning. How's everybody today? Everybody good? Well, welcome to uh, St. John Luther Church. I want to first welcome those on Facebook Live and our congregation also via Zoom and of course everybody who's gathered here in the sanctuary as we celebrate this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, a note to, uh, well, everybody really, particularly those who are visiting for the first time, uh, we will not have uh, music per se. We're going to be a cappella today. Uh, and uh, we've, we've got organists planned out through the end of November, but there was one week that we didn't have anyone, and we could have found someone, and I thought, and I talked to Janet, and uh, we thought, well, it'd be kind of fun just to do something different. So we'll be a little more of the primitive church, and, and uh, we'll still sing some hymns. We were careful to pick ones that might be a little more familiar, so you can be in good voice, and uh, it'll just be a little bit different adventure for all of us. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will comfort us and keep us in the midst of this interesting experience in worship. So with that, a few, a few announcements. I, I wanted to let you know something kind of unique is going to be happening uh, this afternoon at 2.30. Um, an organization called BRIC, which is uh, building, Recon building Racial Reconciliation in God's Kingdom, is going to have their uh, business meeting in our MPR at 2.30. And uh, Beth and I are members of that, and uh, I was uh, invited by that group to put a strategic plan together for them in the last couple years. But what's particularly interesting, I was thinking and I was talking to Pastor Johnny about the whole aspect of diversity and this type of thing. Uh, Saketh will be having their lunch in there and they'll be resolving their lunch at about that time. And we thought it would be kind of cool for these two groups to kind of exchange the peace as it were. Uh, Saketh is gonna provide some, uh, some desserts for our guests and uh, and I'm gonna go buy some Indian pizzas for the meeting, but it's just gonna be an interesting opportunity to just see how the spirit moves between and within us uh, in our context. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see what that really is. Um, I want to apologize for the lateness of the voice the, uh, this month. We had uh, some uh, uh, technical difficulties of great significance uh, for well over a week. Uh, due to a variety of different things. I thank Dave Androvich for marshalling that and for two, two uh, parents of uh, Renaissance children who are high-end engineers who were able to get in and work fairly late into the night to finally figure out what in the world was wrong. And they fixed it, but in the end, uh, uh, it was also understood that we are laboring under some fairly old technology of which I cannot explain, uh, but uh, that will have to probably be updated in the near future. Um, I wanted to also lift up the fact that we will be welcoming new members October 23rd, and uh, on October 2nd, I'm gonna offer a, a, a little gathering right after church, probably in the music room for those who are interested in joining our congregation, just to grab a cup of coffee from, or something to eat from our, our uh, coffee hour, and then come on into the uh, uh, music room, and we'll talk a little bit more about St. John and uh, what, what our ministry is all about. Uh, what else do I want to lift up? There's a lot of notes here. But anyway, Barb Dillon's funeral is uh, this Saturday at 11, but with visitation at 10, service at 11, and a luncheon uh, uh, that would follow. So uh, Barb, as we all know, is just a beloved member of this congregation and uh, died in the midst of COVID. And uh, it's gonna be nice for us to be able to remember her and celebrate her life. Um, I wanna thank those who have offered to me their condolences for the path, for the death of my, my niece. Um, I'm in the midst of tending to the family, as pastors tend to do in these situations. And uh, I ask for continued prayers 
I, I, the thing that's toughest for me, and it, it does break my heart greatly, that uh, I have to watch my sister and brother-in-law suffer so much. Uh, it's tough to watch a child die, and so this is what's going on. Finally, I want to uh, lift up Pathways and Compassion. We've had some people sign up. Uh, we'll be planning a training session for that nursing home visitation ministry uh, within uh, the next month or so. And that is all I have to say, except, oh no, it's not all I have to say. And I know Nancy has something, but before you get to it, Nancy, let me just share, as Donna's looking at me, that pasties will begin once again. October 1st, so please contact Donna Vesenko to order. Uh, and also, if you're interested in learning how to uh, make the pasties, we can always use a few extra hands in the kitchen to do so. So if it's been your heart's desire to learn the fine art of pasty making, uh, you're, you're in the right place. So contact Donna after, the, after church. And then I think we have another message from, from Nancy. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that we sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and our strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to a new life in Christ who meets us on the road. 
journey now in God's abiding love, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All rise as you are able. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn to love one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. All right, we'll I have a few words, a little bit of a children's sermon to share with those who want to come up, or if we want to just stay seated, but I'm going to do it, so, in any event, we're all children of God, aren't we? One of the things that um, we hope to do in this congregation, and with our children, and with all of us, is to Learn how to love as Jesus loved. Because in the end, that is what defines us in our faith. We are God's hands and feet. And so we try to remember that each one of us is so sacred and so beloved each one of us is broken and carries private pain that most of us don't even know. But what we do know is God is always with each of us, that God's spirit is here to comfort us. And as we are able, we are here to comfort each other. Amen.
saying, When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 113 responsively. Hallelujah, give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, God's glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes, enthroning them with the rulers with the rulers of the people. The Lord makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. The second reading is from 1 Timothy, the second chapter. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise if you're able. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 16th chapter. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors, one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? And the person answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, how much do you owe? And he replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And the master commended his dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so then when it is gone, the children of light may welcome you into the eternal homes. 
Whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the, dis with the dishonest wealth, who will trust to give you true riches? And if you have not been faithful with, with what belongs to the other, who will give you what is your own? You see, no slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one or love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The gray zone. Anyway, there was a, a pastor in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, Lutheran pastor. A lot of, uh, a lot of Lutherans in Eau Claire. And uh, one day he was uh, walking down the street. It was a Saturday afternoon, much like yesterday, actually. Beautiful, beautiful day. He's taking a little walk down the street on the sidewalk. And he sees a, a crowd of young kids gathered in a circle at the end of the street, and as he gets closer, he sees there a group of boys, aged about 10 to 12, and they were clearly making a circle around a dog. And the dog was barking, and, and the pastor wondered if they were abusing this poor animal. And he got closer to the children, and he said, what are you doing with this dog? One of the children said, well, pastor, you see, this dog is, uh, he's a stray, and we all like him a lot, and we all want to take him home. Problem is, uh, there's 10 of us, and there's just one dog, so we were trying to figure out what to do, and we decided we'd have a contest. Whoever could uh, tell uh, the biggest lie would win the dog. Pastor listens to this. He says, That's terrible. Why would you celebrate somebody lying? And then he began to preach for 10 minutes. You know, your yes must be yes, your no must be no. He goes on and on about the virtue of truth and telling the truth. And at the end of this little 10 minute sermon, he said, When I was a boy, never told a lie. Well, little Johnny, who was in that crowd, he sighed a sigh of disappointment. He said, boys, the pastor won the contest. <laughs> Let your yes be yes, your no be no. Jesus would say it all the time. He understood how hard it is for us to be rigorously honest. Uh, we're capable of lying, but certainly capable of shading the truth to satisfy our own ends, as it were. And it's not always easy to be true north. It's difficult. And I think the only way we can really play out true north is if we are living in the peace, not afraid of the consequences of our observations, but just to be straight, to recognize it's not about us, but it's about God. It's not about what I want, it's about what God wants. And as we let that envelop us, we find new levels of intuition and creativity in communicating with others in ways that allow that peace and that hope and that truth to follow through. Without that, it's difficult. We somehow, almost by nature, diminish truth. Now, back in Jesus' day and for hundreds of years before, Within Torah, it was clear 
that it was not acceptable to lend money and charge interest. That was not an acceptable activity. If you had surplus and you knew someone to have need, what you would do, you could do one of two things. You could gift the money to the person with no expectation of being repaid, or depending on the situation, you could provide the funding without interest. In other words, I will give you this money, let's create terms for you to pay it back, but without interest. Recognizing the fact, the fact that when a person has need, uh, to put anything more on top of that is to make a burden too great for anyone to find peace. There was no room for lending and charging interest in the Torah. And in the end, there's no room for it even in the Shalom. I remember my brother George, the former Lutheran pastor who became a leader in the civil rights movement. He uh, took an active interest in my business and we would talk about it uh, almost every day for a little bit. And there was a time in the business where and we always had a line of credit that we could pull on if cash flow, whatnot, this type of thing. But there was a season where we needed to pull reasonably heavy on that line of credit. And my brother, he looked at that and he said, Mark, you know, you've extended out here quite a bit and the interest you're going to pay really is going to take take a lot out of you. And I said, well, I know, but it's what we have to do. And my brother made the greatest gift I've ever received from someone. He says, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you the money to pay off that line of credit, and then we're going to come to terms, and you'll pay it back interest-free so you don't have that interest. And I was just thrilled. I never, that was a very gracious gift. And, uh, this big brother looking out for a little brother, and it all worked out, and I paid him back, and it really, uh, it really gave me some hope. It's a great thing, and that can be done in churches, too. It's not uncommon for people to uh, lend money without uh, interest to the church to get certain things done. So it is something that happens, and it certainly fits in line with our understanding of the, of the law. But anyway, in Jesus' time, and certainly before his time, there were uh, land barons and money lenders in Galilee who preyed upon the poor. Remember, again, 90% of the people are very poor. And a lot of the people who are poor had small family plots of land that they would work and try to you know, survive and live off of. And, Maybe it was olive, uh, olives or dates or wheat or whatever it might have been. But they came on hard times often. And, and these money lenders would uh, lend them the money, but at very, very high rates of interest that would make it virtually impossible to pay back. And then coupled with that, uh, the person who was collecting the money or the, the, the olive oil or the product would often charge even more, just like the tax collectors. It would gouge the people further. What happens is that at some point, the family is not able to pay the debt, and they turn the land over. And the land baron continues to grow. The people may be able to stay there to work the land, but they no longer have any ownership. Totally against the law, totally prevalent throughout Palestine. Jesus thinks about that today, and he tells this story about uh, a land baron and a dishonest manager 
and the fact that the dishonest manager found a way to try to compromise between the land baron and those who owed him something, and they re he reduced the bill in such a way that the land baron would receive his share. The manager would not receive his share, but at least he might uh, make some friends with people. It was very creative, and the land baron was pretty impressed that this guy was able to act so shrewdly. And Jesus muses about this. He says, you know, it's an amazing thing that people engaged in this type of activity use all their creative energy to find ways of getting around things and doing things that are contrary to the law. He says, uh, I wish the children of the light would be as shrewd, would be as creative, would be as, you know, taking their God-given gifts to find ways to share God's love in new and exciting ways to be as excited about that as these others are. And it leaves us with the question, I suppose, is how can we, with our own God-given talents, be creative in sharing God's love with each other and the world? How can we muse about that? How can we think about that? How can we be excited about that? How can we be challenged about that? How can we get up in the morning and say, thank you, God, for this life. Thank you for my faith. Thank you for what I've been given, and thank you for the opportunity you've given me this day to share your light. It's a great question. It's a great way to open the day, and if I'm totally honest, I don't wake up every day and that's what I think, but I try to. It's so easy to get swept away from things. But we're invited to be together on Sunday to start to always try to remember again, why are we here and what are we to do? Recognizing that we are all fallen, we all fall short of the grace of God, but we all strive to be God's hands and feet. And that's a good thing. I think about the ministry we've been given here and the privilege we have to be community here and the fact that the Holy Spirit is upon us here. And I think that part of that excitement that we can share with each other in the world is to think about how fortunate we are to be in the community of St. John. How have we uniquely been fed? And how can we share that story with others? Loved ones or friends that maybe do not have a spiritual home or are going through a struggle? How can we open this home, our spiritual home, for those who are hurting? How do you go forth and tell your story of faith in words and in deeds, living to share God's grace. How do we stay out of that gray zone and become God's children of light? Amen. <clears throat>
Please stand. Let us confess what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As scattered grains of wheat, we are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church and for those in need and for all in God's good creation. And before we do that, I want to ask, are there any prayer requests or praises that you have that you would like to share with the congregation? Any prayer requests, praises, concerns? right over here. Hello, it's, <laughs> of course, it's right here. Oh, all right. Are, are there other uh, prayer requests or pra praises that we would like to offer? One day we're going to have two of these. You can spread it out. Special prayers for Dave Rome, who's still in the hospital at St. Mary's. Okay. All right. Dave Rome. Other Prayers, praises. We're all set. Thank you. Uh, the prayers for my sister and brother in law as they suffer the loss of Susan. Yeah. Mike and Joyce. Mike and Joyce. Okay. Other prayers, praises, requests? If not, we'll move on to and lift those prayers up to the up to the prayers of the church. God our Savior. You keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Divine teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace, hear our prayer. Ruler of nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of courageous leaders, especially Vladimir Zelensky, and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all of our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of God be with you all. Peace be with you all. Peace. You all. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace, everybody. God's peace, everyone. God's peace. God's peace, everybody. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. A peace from Jordan, Dad. Oh, thank you, Jordan. Peace to you, Jordan. <laughs> Please stand. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. In taking this meal, we, we reflect on the life that Jesus gave to each of us. A life where his yes was yes and his no was no. A life where he sacrificed the self for the good of all. He shows us the way to behave, the way to live, the way to hope, the way to share God's love with all. On the night our Lord was betrayed, he gathered his disciples in an upper room, recognizing this would be his last meal with them, and he took bread, he broke it, and he gave it to each of his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sin. After the meal was complete, he took the cup and he said, This cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. We know that with the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are in fact strengthened to become his hands and feet for a world that desperately needs such love. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This is the body of our Lord given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Dan, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.